Hey, want to know how to get closer with your family? I'm giving my five tips on how to have better relationships with your family members and even covering extreme cases like abandonment, incarceration, abuse, and death. So let's hear from you. Comment below, how's your relationship with your family? Is it good or would you like to get it to be closer? Let's get to the show. Hey, welcome to The Blessed Report with Winston Mayo, the regular Christian guy. In this video, we are talking about what the Bible has to say about family. And so what I want to start with is just um, a verse about how we view family. And it's in the New Testament and it says, he who does not take care of his own household, even um, his own family members will be counted as an infidel. So. The Bible takes family very seriously, saying that even unbelievers um, take care of their family. So how much more should you have relationship with them? And also um, Jesus um, being God himself, um, the triune God had relationship with the Father and the Son. I mean, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we see an example of a communal God, right? And I know that um, just with Western uh, modernization and the Industrial Revolution, we have more um, spread out families, uh, but this village mentality that we see in um, other countries like um, Italian families or Nigerian families, those family um, structures are still ingrained in our primal beings. So uh, we have um, advanced in uh, technology and even transportation that metropolitans and major cities, like we live farther apart with like immigration, migration patterns, but we still need that um, village mentality structure of just um, ownership um, one over another, having um, love for one another, um, taking personal responsibility of like, hey, this is my family. So even um, with strained relationships, um, try your best just to be mindful that how you love and how you care for your family will, um, you will be held accountable. And so we need to take ownership over our own uh, family. So number one tip for how to get closer to your family, actively pray. Um, we'll see that um, we will want to have better relationships with our family members, but we kind of um, just have hopes with no active uh, movement or behavior change within ourselves. And what we need is to be mindful that everything that we do is a spiritual battle. And so what we want is to have heart change within ourselves because um, praying actually uh, makes us more malleable, more flexible, less prideful and when we um, pray we are giving our family members over to God to also prepare them for whatever that we want right so a way to change your posture towards your family is remembering um, Ephesians 6 that we do not wrestle with uh, flesh and blood so remembering that everything that is happening in the natural is actually a spiritual thing and I remember from the Gospels that um, parallel with Stephen when he was getting martyred when Jesus on the cross he says um, Lord forgive them for they know not what they do and Stephen says the same thing when he was stoned and so how we can apply this to our families um, if they're saved or unsaved right um, knowing that everything is spiritual so that if they are being influenced uh, just by the flesh by sin um, knowing that hey if they are unsaved they are under um, the law and they are under like the influence of like, if we're being just honest, just the devil of sin. And um, if you're not being ruled by your spiritual man, but you're being ruled by your natural man, I think that you can take the same words as Stephen and Jesus, like they do not know what they are doing. And so how we can change our postures towards our families is that, hey, even though um, you're just like, yo, you are my age and you are behaving in this manner. 
you are older than me and you're supposed to be a guardian and you're uh, behaving in a way that I think is uh, <laughs> inadequate, right? But if they are, have not received the Holy Spirit, if they have not been baptized uh, with fire to be renewed, they are being ruled and governed by their natural sinful man. And so literally, they don't know what they're doing. Um, just in the spiritual realm, you could be naturally doing some bad stuff knowingly. Um, but I don't think that you can um, look at them as in the same way we will look at like us that have been awakened by his spirit, have come to the enlightenment of his word. And even like the um, scriptures say that the natural man cannot understand spiritual things. And so I think that um, this helps us to limit expectation because uh, most miscommunication comes when expectations are not met. Of like, hey, you're supposed to be my sibling, my brother and sister, and you treated me wrong. Hey, you're supposed to be my family, and my guardian, my um, parent, mother, father, uncle, whatever, and you abuse me. But um, if we equal out the playing field, of, hey, they are under sin, they are under flesh, they are gonna behave like sinful people. Even um, when it comes to Christians, we see um, in the Gospels that you can be demonically um, influenced, even um, if we're not just talking about just demonically, um, Satan and the devil can influence you if you yield and give in to the flesh and you give in to sin. So us as Christians, as a body, should look at everything from a spiritual lens, um, knowing that, hey, this battle is not with flesh and blood, it's with uh, the principalities of this time, with the devil being the ruler of the air, the prince of this world, influencing people um, physically by what's happening in the spiritual. So this is why um, we pray, this is why we fast, this is why we Bible study, so we can be guarded in the full armor of God, be able to combat what's happening in the spiritual realm. All right, number two um, tip for how to get closer to your family. Everything is on you and start with yourself. And um, I've been really reading relationship books, entrepreneur books, leadership books, business books. They all say the same thing. You cannot change people, but you can change yourself. And um, consequently, people will adjust to your adjustments. I think that our families uh, will see that we'll have the least amount of grace, patience, mercy, forgiveness towards them. And we're really short and they get on our nerves um, the quickest because um, the Bible says a prophet has no honor in his own country, right? So we have people that know us the best. They are the closest to us. But the things that bother us show us ourselves. So you have to start with yourself first. And I think that our families being in such close proximity with us show us our own inconsistency and show us our own hypocrisy. So I can't tell uh, my cousin like, hey, wait until marriage and stop having sex um, outside of marriage if I'm out there drinking with them, right? And so your family will take your walk with God as seriously as you do or do not. <laughs> and so um, if we are um, loving unconditional, just like the Bible calls us to do, because um, again, this is what the Bible says that Jesus loved us and died for us while we were yet sinners. We cannot have conditional love as in, I will behave better once my family behaves better. No, they're gonna be who they are. <laughs> and in spite of that, we are able to um, grow and be transformed by the renewing of our mind and um, just um, submission, right? And so I just um, believe in like just a supernatural power of the Holy Spirit be able to teach us how to engage with each individual family member and dynamic. So this comes in Colossians that our words will be seasoned and great knowing how to meet every person individually and so when we're starting with ourselves if we are more faithful and consistent knowing that um, our brain and our psyche will have some 
pushback when it comes to change or differences. We have to be mature enough and patient enough to know that, hey, um, implementing change takes time, even with ourselves and even with our family members. And so when we are new creations in Christ, we are literally different people, right? So our family has to adjust to that also. They have to read and uh, learn in the cerebral cortex and have new memory tracks when it comes to the subconscious. So they have learned how to adjust to Winston. Um, but now in Christ, I'm Avery <laughs> or whatever. These are two different people. So um, relearning takes place. And even if we're talking about naturally, it takes a thousand hours of practice for something to become muscle memory. So that's just a lot of time. So we have to be able to desensitize ourselves, um, limit our timelines, and limit our expectations. For the scripture says that hope deferred makes the heart sick. And so when we have unmet expectations with our family members um, or we're just not patient, that just shows our own lack of love because it says love is kind, love is patient, love is not self-seeking, it doesn't boast, it uh, keeps no record of wrong. And so if we want like better relationships, we first need to uh, change ourselves and not be hypocritical and not be inconsistent. And then we'll see that our love and our service towards our family members will adjust all the dynamics, hopefully. But even if they don't, we are still called to love and will be held responsible of how we do love or how we do not love them. All right, number three. Um, we can actually become closer with our family through um, activities and also acts of service. So this is just like some leadership or um, business stuff. People like talking about themselves, right? So if you are able to um, break the ice with um, common interests or even um, invested interests, it says like people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So even things that you don't like or or you're not engaged in, I think that we can humble ourselves enough and be malleable enough to be like, hey, I may not care about this thing, but I care about this person. So maybe it's sports, maybe it's um, a game night, uh, but with this, do not um, yield to sin, right? So. To think that you need sin to win someone from sin is just dumb. So I'm not gonna be like, hey, let's go to the club together so we can bond. Nah, there's a whole bunch of like neutral activities that you can do. But um, just remember that these activities are just a tool. They are just a mediator because what you want most of all is intimacy and connection. And so if you're going doing these things, um, make sure that there is like non-surface level communication um, taking place. So um, make sure that you're not burdening um, your family with a whole bunch of changes, but any change um, be upon yourself. So if you want to be like, hey, um, let's get together, I'm cooking. So the labor of um, change is on you. Like you're the one cooking, you're the one setting up, you're the one adjusting to their schedule so that um, there can be more common ground and do more activities where there is more communication and less like surface level um, conversation. Or if you um, want some of the changes to take place of like, hey, I don't really come from an affectionate family. Um, you'll have to be the for one first to engage them in that manner just being like hey I'm proud of you hey um, I love you and um, again with this we're not doing it in expectation that people will change but people will um, take note and be more open over time so we're playing the long game here with our family and just loving them and um, your brain will go to the path of least resistance, anything that's easiest. So don't grow discouraged. That's the one of the biggest things uh, because you may do something and you may not be well received. We're still gonna do it. Um, we're just gonna take everything like scientists where it's just a bunch of trial and error. If something doesn't work, they don't like bowling. Hey, go to axe throwing um, next time. 
uh, we're just uh, maneuvering and making times and space for a great intimacy and great um, connection. A great book about this is The Five Love Languages by I think Gary Chapman and The Five Forgiveness Languages by Gary Chapman as well. Both of them are geared towards relationship, but they are great when it comes to human dynamics, the psyche, and um, just the psychology of like how we interact as individuals and how we interact um, with people in social settings, like a lot of sociology. So the five um, love languages are like acts of service, physical touch, quality time, gifts, words of affirmation. So the way that we like to be loved, how we receive, may be different than how we um, give. Um, to people, but also how people receive and like to be loved may be different than how we love naturally. So we as just Christians have to be malleable to learn how to um, pivot and it's like, hey, um, you don't like gifts, but I like giving gifts. I need to be cognizant in um, loving you well and giving you more words of affirmations of you know, noticing um, your acts of service and not um, being so stagnant in who I am. Right? Number four, um, conflict breeds intimacy. And so what this means is that, hey, um, all these activities are cool, but sometimes without addressing conflict, you will never go beyond the surface. And so you have to be able to engage in conflict um, because secrets do nothing for the family. So a lot of people believe that family secrets keep the peace, but in reality, they just keep everybody cordial and they um, don't make for a great connection or intimacy because of unaddressed um, material. So if you're like with your siblings, hey, I would like to be closer, um, be open to rejection, right? And they'll be like, no, I don't want to be closer. And so um, that's why we pray beforehand so the Lord can prepare the soil that everybody's malleable. But if they're like, hey, I don't want to, and you say why, and they're like, hey, it always felt like it was a competition between us and that you were trying to make me look bad in front of our parents. Their communication has just bred um, intimacy and closer and connection because there was less um, surface level uh, <laughs> conversation. So you have to be able to engage in conflict um, productively. So this is what the Bible says like, hey, if you have an ought against your brother, and this is like the body of Christ, but also like your siblings or your parents, um, bring it to them. If they will not hear you, bring a witness. So this is where um, good Christian fellowship comes in or um, just people that are good mediators. So it's to be like, hey, this is what the issue is. And that brings intimacy. And then if they won't hear you, um, bring them before the council, right? And so I'm actually going to um, put on the screen also a, um, a feelings chart because we have a lot of primal feelings um, and we don't know that they have an underlying root. So most of the time we're just raking leaves without actually addressing the tree. So like primal feelings are like sadness, anger, joy, um, I think it's like six of them. But with the color wheel, you'll see that it expands in more productive um, language. For oftentimes, the hindrance in communication is that you don't have language. So what um, would appear is like, hey, I was angry, a very primal, very surface level emotion. But in reality, I was embarrassed. What you did to me, um, embarrassed me, it challenged me. And so uh, as a result, anger came out. So anger is like a secondary um, response. So um, with that, you have to be able to um, have good communication funnels um, with your family, right? And so um, be able to engage in some conflict um, productively and don't um, use like you always statements or you never statements use a lot of um, reflective statements of like, hey, when you did this, this made me feel this way. A lot of stuff on yourself, right? All right, so last tip on how to get closer to your family. Um, want to hit more of the harder um, topics. And this is 
Jesus and therapy. I think a lot of people would benefit from like um, Christian counseling, uh, therapy, and seeing a psychiatrist just when it comes to trauma. So most of uh, what we are gauging in is the subconscious. And so um, emotion is tied to memory. So you have to uh, realize that um, feelings are not real, but they do make a reality that we have to deal with, right? And so um, it may not um, be true that, hey, um, your siblings were competing with you, but you have to um, realize that you're engaging with that truth in them manifesting and how y'all aren't having a um, connection, right? And then we also have some of the harder um, traumas when it comes to uh, things you cannot change, um, no matter how much activities you have. You just have like death. Um, the Bible says that we are in the um, ministry of reconciliation. That's what the gospel is. Jesus reconciling himself um, to us, to the Father, right? Um, but if someone's dead, it's like, hey, um, we still need to um, deal with that. Incarceration. Um, sometimes um, actions aren't direct sins, but they have um, created a trauma where uh, someone else's actions has limited your ability to have relationship with them. Um, also, um, abuse. So that is uh, physical abuse, um, sexual abuse, like rape and molestation. And in those um, more toxic um, relationships, we have to acknowledge that you have alienated um, the relationship to a point that it may not be able to um, be reconciled. And this is where um, repentance and forgiveness come from. And this is what the Bible says, that as we do not forgive those um, and their trespasses, the Father in heaven will not forgive us, right? So no matter what, we are accountable and called to forgive others, right? And so um, when it comes to repentance and uh, forgiveness, um, people need to show, like, we forgive, right? But when it comes to, like, relationally and reconciliation, um, people need to enact or embody the behaviors of repentance, right? And so we're not, like, called to um, have relationship with, like, people who are physically abusing us, sexually abusing us, or um, whatever. But if they are like truly repented, renewed by um, the Holy Spirit, um, we are called to um, love them appropriately, unconditionally. And this is how you can measure if you have really like truly forgiven people. Because in reality, I don't think a lot of people um, have forgiven people. And you can tell by um, anger it is again a primal emotion or um, just spatial patterns of like, hey, I don't want to engage with them um, when they're reaching out. And so um, sometimes those are just healthy cycles, right? So we have to be honest with ourselves. We're like, hey, this person is actively still addicted and on drugs, right? This person is still actively a manipulator. And um, we have to be able to have discernment. This is why prayer is so important. But um, when it comes to the scripture, it's like, hey, if your brother comes to you seven times and uh, repented of the, their sins, um, you have to receive them back. How much? Seven times, 70 times, all right? And so I think that um, sometimes we just have to really the realization that certain relationships are not coming back, right? So sometimes that could be through um, incarceration, you could visit them, but more so through like abuse or death is like a very permanent one. <laughs> but um, I think the big one, or just even like myself, I don't know what a lot of people know, I am like personally adopted. And so it's like, hey, um, do we have options if we don't have traditional family relationships. And this is what the Bible says. Um, Jesus is in the press and his brothers and mother are coming towards him. And his disciples are like, hey, your family wants to um, speak to you. And Jesus says, who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Um, look around. Um, they who keep the will of my father, 
those are my mother and those are my brothers. And so um, the big idea here is that our ultimate family, our ultimate uh, father in heaven uh, is like the body of Christ and um, Jesus, um, God and the Holy Spirit. So I think we could be really encouraged if we don't have like traditional uh, family dynamics that uh, we have a body of believers or even our father in heaven who is Emmanuel, God with us, who um, has come off the throne in the incarnate body, died for us, resurrected, and now his spirit lives among us. And so uh, we're never truly alone because we have a great cloud, a cloud of witnesses around us. And so as we just engage in forg um, forgiving our family members, uh, believers that are flawed human beings, I think again, if we take that posture of lowering expectations, um, being like, hey, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. As um, we forgive them, their trespasses, our Father in heaven will uh, forgive us, season our words in grace for the Lord gives um, grace more to the humble. So if we humble ourselves in prayer uh, with just um, engaging in intimacy, um, not having any type of time frame that's really quick, but um, being patient, being kind, knowing that love perseveres, um, love endures all things, love takes no record of wrong, we'll be able to make it to the end. So um, thank you for watching The Blessing Report with Winston Mayo, The Regular Christian Guy. Um, make sure to um, turn on your bell notifications. Um, everything important is in the description box below. Um, and also, um, just support this video and share this video about like practical tips of how to grow closer with your family. Actively um, praying, um, activities, common interests, service, changing yourself, and actually like um, getting therapy uh, for some trauma that's uh, made in your subconscious just uh, with emotion, good or bad, being tied into memory, triggering us like a response. And so um, thank you for that. And also everything um, you need to know is just like on a weekly like playlist. So the subscribe button is up here. So um, support the channel. Um, here are like new videos over here. So check those out. Um, also check out our playlist. Um, new videos um, coming and here's like our like newest um, video or whatever um, Check out next week for a, a new video and Yo, I appreciate you remember that God blesses people by using people to bless people So how have you been a blessing in someone else today?